Good morning and welcome to this Hope Church online devotional. Today we're in the book of Genesis in chapter 34, looking at verses 1 through 31. Before we get into the story, I think it's very important that we understand the background and the context here. And that's true of every story you read. If you heard the story of the Sheriff of Nottingham and Robin Hood for the first time, you would naturally assume that the Sheriff would be the good guy and the thief would be the bad guy. But once you know the motives of the characters involved, you find yourself rooting for Robin Hood and booing the Sheriff. And it's, it's a bit like that here. We need to know and understand the motives as well as the actions of what's going on in this passage. So in this passage, there's five main characters that we're going to talk about. And before we get into each of their motives, I was reminded of a verse in 1 Chronicles 28. This is verse 9. And it says this, that God sees the motives of our heart and the motives behind our thoughts. And I want you to bear that in mind as we go through this passage. So in this passage, we have five main characters. The first character, Shechem. He's a local nobleman and he's a Canaanite and his motive in this passage is quite clear. It's very sinful. Um, he is caught up in lust and that lust leads to the horrific abhorrent act of rape. The second character is Dina. Dina, her motive is to visit her friends in the, the Canaanite city. It's a totally different motive. It's, it's not sinful at all. It's, it's innocent. The next couple of characters, it's a bit more grey and you need to understand a little bit more about their backgrounds to understand their motivations. So the first character is Jacob. Jacob is Dina's father. He's also the father of Simeon and Levi, the two other characters in the passage. Now, Jacob, if you were to compare to any kind of animal or sea creature, to me, he kind of comes across like a slippery eel. You can't really pin him down. And that's certainly true in this passage. Even when he's confronted with a horrific act of rape, he, he doesn't want to... Um, defend the people of God. He doesn't want to stand up. He doesn't want to explain that actually his family are set apart, that they can't intermarry, that actually that they have a, a unique relationship with God and that they're called to be a, a pure and holy set apart people. He, he doesn't do any of that. He really sits on the fence. And, and we know at this point in Jacob's life, he's very much just learning to trust in the plans of God. Even in the passage before, going back to the background, Jacob has made peace with Esau, his brother, and rather than doing what he said, he's gone to a different place, almost because he's still scared of Esau, still scared of retribution for his past. And it, you can tell in this time, Jacob is still in that place of not yet fully trusting in God's plan. However, despite this, God still uses him later in his life to speak prophetic judgment over the two remaining characters in this passage. Levi and Simeon. Now the prophetic judgment that we see on Jacob's deathbed at the end of Genesis is quite simple. He says over Simeon and Levi that because of this passage, because they um, took the, the, the sacrament of circumcision and they abused it, that they would be scattered amongst the people, that they would be scattered amongst the nation. And that was their, their um, the judgment over them. But that judgment looked very different for Simeon than it did for Levi. And that difference in how it looked was directly related to the motivations behind why they acted the way they did in this passage. For Simeon, Simeon was motivated by a fleshly desire for revenge. And we see that the judgment of scattering he experiences is one in which the, the tribe of Simeon really disappears. They get subsumed into the wider people of Israel. They lose their unique identity. They lose their place, essentially. They're just caught up in the wider nation. That's a very negative scattering. Whereas Levi, Levi is motivated here by a zealous anger for the Lord's family. He will not have the Lord's family, the Lord's name defiled or um, abused in any way. And it's, it's out of that place of zealous anger that Levi acts. And because of that, and God knows that motive, because of that, Levi's family are scattered in a very different way. The Levites become the priests of God. They become the people who act as that, that priestly function, intermediating and bringing sacrifice on behalf of the people. Their scattering is actually one for purpose. It's, 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 it's not a negative scattering. In the end, God redeems the family and uses them in a new way. You see, it's not just our actions that matter. And yes, our actions do matter. And that's quite clear. There, there's direct consequences. But actually, our motivations, our heart's desire matters too. And I just wanted to close on this. It's a verse from Jeremiah 17.10. So Jeremiah 17.10 says this. 
I, the Lord, examine the mind. I test the heart to give it to each according to his way, according to what his actions deserve. I'm just going to quickly pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, that you not only see our actions, you see our heart. Lord, we just pray right now, Lord, that you would just guide our hearts. Holy Spirit, that you'd be upon us, Lord, that you would lead us. Lord, that we wouldn't just act in the right way, Lord, but our motives would be pure and holy and in accordance with your will. Amen.